Hey guys, how are you all doing today? Today we're going to travel back in time to the making of Return of the Jedi, where George Lucas argues with one of his screenwriters as to why killing Luke is the worst possible idea and something that you should never do, at least in episode 6. Now if you didn't know, George Lucas supposedly had treatments all the way up to episode 12. And once he sold to Disney, his treatments for 789 were completely discarded into the garbage. So it's interesting to go back in time and see what his thought process was while making episode 4, 5, and especially 6, because that was his last time where he ever got to develop Luke Skywalker's character. Now as we get a peek into the mind of George Lucas, we get this first-hand account of his creative process and how he thinks. As I continue my exploration into the making of Return of the Jedi, which I love making these videos. We get to see more of a behind the scenes development where we learn how George makes his decisions while he crafted episode six together with his top team. For five consecutive 10 hour days, George along with his screenwriter, Lawrence Kasdan, producer, Howard Kazanjian, and director, Richard Marquand, sat down and hashed out ideas. They had read George's two drafts, which I've covered in previous videos, and watched the first two movies over and over again. Then they got to it. The process was the same for Jedi as Empire. We were already on a speeding train, Kasdan would say. There were designs and pictures of things before I even started writing. But when I came up to Marin, George was relieved because somebody was going to do the part that he hated, so he could concentrate on the parts that he loved, which was to design and to produce. I had just adopted a baby. Amanda, and I really wanted to spend time with my daughter and not have to go to the set for long hours, George Lucas would say. She was born while I was working on the script, just before Larry Kasdan was coming on. During Empire, I was trying to get my company set up and trying to become independent financially. On Jedi, I was trying to find time to spend with my daughter. The conference was challenging. All kinds of things came up, Marcan says. It was a very stimulating time. We made a huge number of changes. It seemed to us that there were too many lead personalities, just in terms of sheer directing, gads of people around the whole time. So Larry and I said bluntly to George, you've got to kill somebody. If the Emperor does pull out a secret weapon and the weapon is working, and they wipe out half the fleet, it becomes even more intense. Then Vader knocks the Emperor into the gun, and he is killed by his own gun. And in the process, the gun blows up in a big explosion. Luke is alright, Vader is coming apart. I think it'd be great for Luke to try to help Vader while the thing is blowing up. And then Vader gets his cape caught in the door and says, leave without me and Luke takes his mask off. The mask is the very last thing, and then Luke puts it on and says, now I am Vader. Surprise, the ultimate twist. Now I will go and kill the fleet, and I will rule the universe, says George Lucas. That's what I think should happen, says Kasdan. No, 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 come on, this is for kids. I think you should kill Luke and have Leia take over. You don't wanna kill Luke. Okay, then kill Yoda. I don't wanna kill Yoda. You don't have to kill people. You're a product of the 1980s. You don't go around killing people. It's not nice. No, I'm not. I'm trying to give the story some kind of an edge to it. I know you're trying to make it more realistic, which is what I tried to do when I killed Ben, but I managed to take the edge off of it, and it's what I tried to do when I froze Han. But this is the end of the trilogy, and we've already established that there are real dangers. I don't think we have to kill anyone to prove it. No one has been hurt. Ben and Han, they've both. Luke got his hand cut off. Ben and Han are fine, Luke got a new hand two cuts later. By killing somebody, I think you alienate the audience. I'm saying that the movie has more emotional weight if someone you love is lost along the way. The journey has more impact. I don't like that, and I don't believe that. Well, that's alright. I have always hated that in movies. When you go along and one of the main characters gets killed, this is a fairy tale. You want everybody to live happily ever after, and nothing bad happens to anybody. I hate it when characters get killed too. Oh, you do. I do. I resent it, and I resented it when I was a little kid. I would watch and there would be these five guys and one of them would be the funny clown and halfway through, one of them gets killed. Why did they kill their lead? He was the best character. I felt that about Ben the first time I saw Star Wars, but that one worked like crazy. Yes, I know, but we've done that. The same thing with Han. The biggest reaction we got was when people asked, how can you leave the movie half finished? Well, 
the main thrust of this one is that it has to be fun. So this started to get flippant and we slowly began to realize that with the fans out there, it was very hard to actually kill anybody. It's really George telling the story, says Kazanjian. George is the one who argues and fights with himself. We may have an idea or suggestion or challenge or say, no, it shouldn't really work that way. And yeah, you argue, you don't fight. With me, I tend to ask a question. I'd force George to react to things much more volubly than on Empire. Kasdan would say, George is a very eccentric guy, and when somebody asks him to act outside of his safety mode, he's hilarious. George can be goofy. He's a kid. He's fun. So let me ask you guys something. Let me know in the comments right now. Do you agree with George Lucas or Lawrence Kasdan? Do you think Luke Skywalker should have died in Return of the Jedi? Now, from Lawrence Kasdan's point of view, he was just trying to add some edge to it, and he was doing that simply by killing the main character. Whereas George Lucas absolutely hates that idea and think it's completely unnecessary. Not only are you not telling the story, you're merely just doing something dramatic for the sake of being edgy. This is the same thing that I felt with The Last Jedi. I didn't think Luke needed to die, and if he was going to die, at least give him a really big badass send-off. Now I've talked about The Last Jedi enough, but this right here, just being a fly on the wall with this transcript, going almost 40 years back in time, or actually, yeah, more than that, about 40 years in time to when Return of the Jedi was being made, really made me realize how much more George Lucas was pro keeping Luke Skywalker alive. Now in fact, he never had the idea to kill Luke up until perhaps episode 9. So anything beyond that is just rumor. It's from the horse's mouth right here, guys, so we can see that George Lucas clearly doesn't think that you should just kill off people. Now, that's not to say that he was thinking that no one should get hurt. I mean, Han pretty much almost went blind, as well as almost died, Obi-Wan Kenobi died, Yoda died, and Luke got his butt kicked, almost died, and got his hand chopped off. Not to mention two Death Stars worth of millions of people exploded and died. So in my opinion, I don't think George Lucas is in favor or not in favor of killing people in his movies or stories. I think he's in favor of just telling the story the way he wants to tell it. Not to add a dramatic edge by killing someone or keeping someone alive or throwing this person in there or that person out of there just for subverting expectations or creating some sort of a emotional response towards some character that you felt close to and now they're gone. Now, I also want to know what you guys think about Luke taking Vader's helmet, putting it on his head, and then saying, now I am Vader, and turning to the dark side. I'm really glad that didn't happen. I think that would have been the true definition of subverting expectations. But I like the way George writes stories. He doesn't just do things in movies to elicit a certain edge or to be edgy or to subvert expectations. He does it to tell a story the way he wants to tell it for the story's sake, not for an emotional response sake, or to say, hey, here's a movie, and I'm gonna do some risky stuff that doesn't really make sense to the story just to make you feel an emotion. Feeling emotions aren't what make you attached or aren't what make a movie good or bad. They're just emotions, and we as humans have lots of them. Anyways, I find this whole transcript really interesting and all of these original making ofs. I hope you'll enjoy the future videos that I'll be making about this, and you'll go back and watch the other ones that I've created as well. I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you for watching. Throw a like on this one if you did enjoy it, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, remember, the Force will be with you. Always.